students gathered opposite the town hall in a small but vocal protest against several issues affecting tertiary education funding. Most anger was directed against the NLP's plan to drop its policy on free education, but plans for a tuition tax, cuts to higher education funding, and state government plans to introduce fees for TAFE college students were all criticised. Student leaders stopped short of a no-confidence motion in the Labor government and there was no attempt to carry the protest to Premier Griner, who was holding a press conference in the town hall at the same time. Protests will continue when students picket federal member for Newcastle, Alan Morris, at the Newcastle League Club on Thursday. In tonight's NBN News, angry reaction today to the state government's plan to sell off public housing at Newcastle's East End. Trades Hall Council says building unions will investigate the possibility of industrial action to hinder the project's completion. For all the news, join us tonight at 6. to the federal government's expectations that institutions become more self-supporting. Institute Deputy Principal Dr Les Eastcott says there will be a 1% cut in federal government spending next year and another 2% within the next three years. Overseas students will pay between seven and a half and $12,000 a year. Dr Eastcott says overseas students won't take places which could have been filled by Australians. One of the points that I would want to emphasise is that this program will not uh, lead to some student being excluded from the institution. Uh, our quotas for Australian students are set by government and our first priority will always be to provide education for Australian students up to the maximum that we're allowed. Any overseas students that come will be in addition to those quotas. Overseas students will need to complete an intensive English language program. We're seeking approval to establish an ELICOS centre. ELICOS uh, centre is a centre which provides intensive English language programs. Uh, we can offer these on a fee paying basis and we will be offering these courses first to potential students in the uh, full fee paying program but secondly we can also offer them as short courses to other interested uh, overseas customers. It's hoped students will come from countries such as Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, the Republic of Korea, Taiwan and the Philippines. Dr Eastcott has just returned from negotiations in South Korea and Thailand to attract students and to encourage student and teacher exchange programs. Newcastle's contribution to the statewide exhibition is a display of photographs at the Region Art Gallery. The display, titled An Inner View of Newcastle, obtained its name from Joseph Lysett's 1818 painting. The exhibition focuses on the heart of Newcastle and how it's seen by people from all walks of life. For that reason, it features the work of artists, students, professionals, children and adult amateurs and journalists. The photographs present a picture of life in one of the state's largest industrial cities. Lake Macquarie's contribution to the exhibition is entirely different. It's one of a few in the state to feature the work of just one artist, Jane Lander of Newcastle. Her exhibition of landscape paintings and drawings, titled Under the Weather, Landforms and Waterlines, focuses on water. The artist contrasts two different areas, Lake Macquarie and northwest New South Wales. She also aims to illustrate different attitudes to water, such as how people in the country and outback depend on it for their existence, 
while those on the lake view water as something to be enjoyed through leisure activities. Many of the exhibitions involved in the Bicentennial Project will tour New South Wales galleries during the next 18 months. You'll find Angela Pellinger working for the next couple of weeks at My Florist in Alma Road, New Lambton. Proprietor Peter Hurd was in the United States studying his art in 1976 when Angela was only 11 years old. Since then she's completed university studies which included flowers and their arranging at the Texas A&M University in the small town of College Station. Angela will spend three and a half months altogether in Australia, later seeing the sights of Sydney and the Expo, as well as visiting the garden city of Melbourne. Angela, very pretty, all done. Thank you, yes. Well, I you're a it. qualified florist. Yes. Just <laughs> what is that? Well, it's one that's gone to a qualified school, and I went to the Ben School of Floral Design at Texas A&M University and went through their course. And um, I've been working for about a year, and I've come here to be an exchange student. Right, well just what do you learn at a florist school? Um, you learn about colors with color wheels and the different styles and techniques and, and just some of the mechanics of how you keep everything together, that type of thing. The whole purpose of course of traveling is to learn, so what can you learn here that you couldn't learn there? Um, the different styles, uh, you have different styles at, uh, here in Australia than we do in, at Texas and we're learning some European styles that I want to teach some of the people here. So that's, it's just an exchange of styles and ideas. A total exchange. Right. <laughs> exactly. Well, set us straight. Is the yellow rose the, the flower of Texas? No, actually, it's the blue bonnet. It's the national flower, probably. And it usually grows in May along this, the streets. So. The yellow rose is just a song. Right. <laughs> kind of a myth. So. Hope you enjoy your stay. Well, thank you very much. That was all right. The Giants lived up to their name in defence. They tackled the Knights out of the game with some of the biggest hits seen at the ISC. The Gold Coast scored the only try in the second minute of play. The half-back Bagnall made a break, which eventually saw the flying Gonzales score. Two penalty goals from Mike Eden saw the Giants go to a half-time break, leading 8-0. Despite the handy lead, Gold Coast coach Bob McCarthy and John Sattler weren't smiling with still 40 minutes to go. Tempers flared 15 minutes into the second period after some particularly spiteful defence. Keenan and Close were both marched off the field for 10 minutes for starting the ruckus. The cold front that came through mid-afternoon couldn't cool down the players' tempers, with Glanville and Simpkins having a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle, which eventually saw them both sin bin for 10 minutes and both sides down to 11 players each. No matter what the Knights tried, they couldn't get over the line. Mike Eden field goal, the only point in the second half.